Hi again. Hi, Walid. Uh, this is another viable scenario um, regarding the different stem designs used in total hip replacements. Walid, can you have a look at the picture and uh, tell me what you think? What are these? Yeah, these are three different stems. The one to the right is a uh, is an uncemented stem. Then the two to the left are cemented stems. Um, to the right, the uncemented ones, they rely on biological fixation to the bone. Uh, so they are either, uh, they either have pores for bone uh, in growth or they have rough surfaces for bone on growth. Uh, with this one, uh, this is the corial stem, I believe, which is one of the most commonly used stems in the UK. Uh, it's a fully uh, coated, uh, hydroxyapatite fully coated stem. Um, the two to the left, you've got the Exeter stem and the Charnley stem. Um, regarding the uncemented stem, uh, the corial stem, it has a trapezoidal upper uh, metaphysical component. And uh, the one in the picture is a, uh, is a colorless uh, design. The trapezoidal metaphysical component uh, allows metaphysical fixation and it has a tapered uh, stem um, uh, for uh, fixation to the metaphysical diaphysial portion of the femur. What is the white color of the surface? Uh, this is the hydroxyapatite coating. So uh, uh, with this, uh, with the corial stem, it's fully uh, hydroxyapatite coated. It acts as an osteoconductive material to allow bone on growth on the stem. Uh, there were some controversies regarding the hydroxyapatite coating, uh, but clinically it has produced uh, excellent uh, results. Um, the, going to the cemented stems, uh, these are two different uh, philosophies of uh, cemented stem. With the Exeter stem, it is a colorless, highly polished, uh, mm -hmm. double tapered stem. Uh, this stem relies on uh, controlled substance that occurs within the cement mantle. Uh, this uh, allows uh, the axial compression forces that occurs on the stem to be converted into hoop stresses uh, to the bone. As for the Charlie stem, it has a color, has a rough uh, surface, uh, and it uh, functions as a composite beam design. So the stem acts as a rod, which binds to the cement, which then binds to the uh, bone. Uh, okay, I agree. Um, so you mentioned that both those are cemented stems. What do you mean by cement? Uh, so cement is a polymethyl acrylate. It is. Uh, it acts as a grout, uh, as a space filler, rather than a glue. It has no uh, glue-like properties. Uh, it is formed of a polymer and a monomer. Uh, the polymer is powder form. Uh, it has an initiator, has a radiopaque substance, usually barium, and has a coloring agent, uh, usually chlorophyll. The monomer, which is the liquid, um, has a stabilizer uh, to prevent uh, polymerization. Okay, great. Uh, are you aware or have heard of the um, uh, bone cement disease? Oh, uh, yes. It's... Um, <clears throat> It's a relatively rare uh, condition, happens in about 0.1% of um, cemented stems. Uh, it was um, described in 2009 by the famous paper in the British Journal of Anesthesia as a syndrome of hypoxia, hypotension, and cardiac arrhythmia that could occur with uh, cementation. Um, it's more common with fractures. Uh, particularly pathological fractures, more common with long stems, and um, more common in patients which have uh, prior cardiopulmonary uh, conditions. Brilliant. It seems, it seems you're aware of the condition. Do you know how we can prevent this from uh, happening? So from the anesthetic side, we need to discuss the cementation technique with the anesthetist. Uh, 
from the surgical site, uh, we uh, proper hemostasis in high risk patients. We shouldn't um, aim for uh, high uh, cement pressurization. We can use a vent. Yep, time's up. Okay, thank you. How do you think this went? Uh, it's not the easiest uh, viva, and uh, it takes a lot of mental effort to get these. Uh, you know, to get this information out. Uh, I think it, you know, it went, went okay. I, I'm, 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 yeah, I think it went okay as well. I think on a viable station like this, um, your performance would make you easily pass the station. Um, but it's a topic that I'm sure uh, you, you have prepared really well and you could score higher marks if you, if you can size yourself a little bit more and, and try to get quickly to, um, uh, the bit where the examiner would want to take you, uh, yeah. talking about bone cement disease and how to prevent it, is where you're going to score an eight. Um, I agree that there's a lot to talk about the cement design, uh, the philosophy behind the fixation, advantages and disadvantages of giving different ones. Um, it, it's, it's, it's a huge amount of information to concise in five minutes. But I think generally it went really well. Okay, thank you. So this is the paper that Walid has mentioned in his answer. Um, it was developed by the Department of Anesthesia from the University of Hosp University Hospitals of South Manchester. And it was the first one that set the definition for bone cement implantation syndrome or disease, uh, discussing the, the pathophysiology behind uh, the condition. Um, I think everyone should be aware uh, of this paper and prepare to it because it's a, it's a hot topic on the Viva stations, then you, you could really be asked this. It would be very good if you're prepared with a, um, an answer. But it also discusses the different ways uh, of prevention of that condition. Thank okay. you. I agree. Thank you.